What is going on you guys? I am taking a little detour from the Turbo CRX to kind of give you guys a quick little walk around with Love Honda. I have a potential buyer coming tonight to pick it up and I'm kind of sad about it. But it is what it is. This car is meant to sell and it is finally officially ready for a new home. I posted today on Instagram and I had a lot of hits for it, but this guy he really wanted it. He blew up like every social media I had. He told his boys to hit me up and I replied to him and he said he's going to be here after work. So I'm going to give you guys a quick little walk around, a little recap of everything we did here with La Panda before it potentially goes tonight. It may be the last time we see La Panda here on the channel. I know I said it before, but I think... I think this may be the last video of La Panda. So this is an 89 Honda CRX HF model five speed. It was left to rot in the back of a shop for two years without a hood on. This car was painted blue with a body kit, a wing west body kit in fiberglass, which was the reason why I wanted to buy it because I was wanting the body kit for my other CRX over there. Contacted the seller. He linked me up with the owner. I talked to the owner. We came to an agreement. I bought the car. And once the car got here, I stripped the body kit off to store it. And then I wasn't entirely sure what I was going to do with it. After going through my inventory, I realized that I have front bumpers, back bumpers. I had a lot of miscellaneous CRX stuff to kind of put this thing back together. But my first uh, plan of attack was to get the car to turn on because it didn't run. Show you guys under the hood here real quick. Bone stock engine had no intake arm, no battery, no tie down. It literally was just covered in leaf, dirt, mud, and I pretty much pressure washed the whole entire thing. Now, mind you guys, I said this car didn't have a hood on, which you can see all the little rust spots here and there. These are mainly surface rust. There's some areas that's probably a little bit deeper. Aside from all these little surface rust, the engine bay, I took the timing side apart, realizing that somebody had already changed the timing belt, water pump, and tensioner. So I sealed it back up, repainted the valve cover or wrinkle black because it was all peeled up. And then I did a new distributor with new cap with new wires and plugs it has new engine fluid it has new coolant fluid got the uh, battery tied down with a brand new battery as well big shout out to tony for the hf intake arm this one's specific because it's really small in the tube and i also got the front two from him as well too we finally got the car to turn on. I took it to go smog. The car passed with flying colors. And then I realized it had a rip muffler in the back, which then I also replaced as well too. Brand spanking new. Hell yeah. After getting the engine all situated, I cleaned the interior. The interior was in really rough shape as well too. So pretty much it had no front seats. And then I was able to get these seats off my giveaway car because I got some new seats for that. And this one right here pretty much is clean, except this one I swapped the top half because the bracket on the original top was bent. So I put this one on for now. I am gonna include with the car the original top half, which is really clean. It just needs the back to be restitched with new material. The interior is pretty much complete and as clean as it can be for the age. You can see there are some parts that are mainly blue and then back half is black because like I said, there was just missing a few things back here that I had to source myself. But for the most part, it's clean, complete, and it's comfortable for me. So hopefully it's comfortable for the new owner. It is still a little dusty because I do drive this car every day and granted, I do have a dirt yard. This is very common here. The heater control unit all works. It's just cracked like the typical climate control is. And it does have a stereo with speakers in it that works perfectly fine. And the door panels aren't really torn up how they typically are. So that's good. No cut forearms. Had a spare bumper in the backyard. Also had a spare rear bumper in the backyard. Now the funny thing is this car has been converted pretty much everything to 9091. And what I mean by that is the bumper is a 9091 style. So is the rear 9091 style. It has the 9091 side moldings and also the 9091 tail lights. But the car is an 89. Now, the only thing that's not converted to 9091 is the corner lamps, and they are brand new as well, too. 8089 has two screws on the side, like so, right here. Regardless, it looks really good. I'm not a purist to that extent. I mentioned earlier that this car didn't have a hood, so you can see all the stickers on this one. This hood is actually from that car, which I also resprayed polar white. Right? 
but this car got a carbon fiber hood so i took the hood over to move it to here now i did do all the trims bottom trims side molding trims i did the mirrors all respray back to black door handles give it that much more fresher look you know what i mean i polished out the tail lights and i painted this cowl as well as the wiper arm with brand new wiper blades i just threw on a couple of days ago and also while doing so i did buy new trunk shocks lift supports for the rear hatch so that's nice and uh lightweight for when you pop the hatch right so in the trunk here the carpet is there but we don't have the we don't have that big old um cardboard thing that sits here to keep this nice and flat it didn't come with one and i didn't have a spare one to toss in here i did also cut and polish the paint because i did have a little bit orange peel here and there shooting at the wrong temperature but the car looks good it couldn't use a little bit more detail to really get it to shine much more because i know it could shine a lot more the cluster light works the clock the uh climate control light works as well too tail lights they work license plate lights work headlights corner lamps they all work i believe the high beam works as well sure does the ponda turns on perfectly fine every time except the first start of the day so this is the first start of the day because i haven't driven this car right oh I, well it turned on so that's good but let me show you guys the second crank it'll fire right over no problems right transmission really smooth every gear works i took it upon myself to go a little bit further with la ponda i did the suspension overhaul the front of the suspension got pretty much new lower control arms new ball joints top and bottom new inner rods new outer rods new boots for the rods it has uh brand new front rotors brand new brake pads the rear of the car has new trailing arm bushings new camber arm new lower control arm bushings it's got uh new drums new rear wheel cylinder and new shoes the e-brake grabs pretty damn good and so does the brake up in the front there we did bleed the entire system out so it has all new somewhat fluids in there and uh, la ponda is pretty much ready for the road like i would trust this car to drive it anywhere i need it to go though there are still some flaws with the car la ponda's clutch i have no idea on the condition of it i know that when i was driving it up the mountain it did kind of smell like clutch a little bit because um it was just a lot of um like incline to drive with such a slow motor slow engine i had to really like throw it in second and third gear just to climb up the hill but once you're cruising it's perfect and the car sounds great mechanically a couple of other flaws i want to talk about here too because i'm not hiding anything pretty much i stated everything on today's ad about the cars pros and cons of it now the bodywork is it's decent for what i did but the paint has a couple flaws itself like a lot of paint chips from moving this hood around in the garage i did burn some spots when i was cutting polishing the car there's a few little minor spots that just needs a little bit of touch up which is really really not a big deal right i did do a video on treating rust and behind the door hinges there are some rust that i shown on a previous video and i want to show you guys that right now so behind the door hinges right here you can see there are some rust spots that the previous owner i guess they attempted to treat it and then they rhino lined it or something because it's really rough right here when i did the treatment on the rust when the fenders were off for paint i pretty much treated the whole front side behind the fender but i didn't get to this whole back side because the door was in the way there's some slight rust on the other side as well too but like i said if somebody tackle it asap it could definitely be taken care of before the cancer spreads so that's pretty much like the biggest flaw of this car but for the most part this is a great commuter to have regardless of that because you know east coast guys got it much worse than us there hasn't been anything else that's been concerning to me with la ponda and i actually do enjoy driving this car every day it's just it needs to go <laughs> this car was never meant to stay it was enjoyable why it lasted this car i think i got about 32 33 mpg on the freeway and that's with a lot of downshifting because of like how i'm so used to driving compared to a slow car 
but in the city streets I've gotten 28 to 29 mpg and I don't really drive this car far anyways to really have a good mpg but I'm sure this car can clock a lot more listen to the car it purrs really really nicely and I'm gonna miss that this is literally the stockest car I've ever owned in my fleet aside from my wagon it came with a single cam but that motor came out after like two weeks and it went b20 vtec but this is the longest I've had a car that has a bone diggity stock engine. So buyer is here and kind of spoke about it, kind of showed him the car. He saw a little bit of the video. He doesn't really watch the channel, but his buddy watches the channel and led him to the car. So he's checking it out right now. I told him take it for a spin. I'm trustworthy enough. He, I, I told him just drive by yourself. It's all good. I ain't tripping. And feel the car out. We, he was ready to sign the paper, but I'm like, drive the car first. Let me know how you feel, and then we'll take care of paperwork. So I think Lafonda, Lafonda's gonna go. You good, man? Big sad. Big sad. Had a little sad moment. I didn't really record. Plus it was too dark anyways. And my Harbor Freight flashlight was dead. I threw a little Instagram clip before this. Car sold. Guys, La Ponda is gone. She is no longer here. But after talking to Noy, he seems very... He, his first car was a CRX and he's been out of the game for a while and uh, kind of secured his life a little bit and wanted to get back into it. He has a 91 MR2 that he was going to case swap but just didn't really have the time and was really looking for a CRX again. His buddy led him to me. He came over here, no hassle. He checked it out. I told him every nook and cranny. Um, he had seen a couple of videos on the channel and uh, despite a couple of the flaws with the car as mentioned in the ad he was like yo i'm down for it cash me out bought the car he's gonna be driving in our home and i told him you know stay in contact keep me posted and if you got any questions whatever just let me know future mods whatever the case may don't be afraid to reach out so la Ponda seems to be in good hands and Hopefully he treats her well. Now we can finally move on to the next thing on the list. You guys are gonna have to stick around for that because I'm not entirely sure myself. 